Hi everyone, it's me, Melanie, your IVF nurse, and this video is going to be about anti-malarian hormone, or as we refer to it, AMH. Now, one of the things that's important to know is that when females are born, we are born with all the eggs we're ever going to have, which is estimated at about 2 million eggs. Now, by the time we reach puberty, those eggs have then declined to about 400,000. And then between puberty to the age of menopause, those eggs, only about 400 to 500 of them will actually make it to ovulation. So we see as a person that progresses in age, the amount of eggs steadily declines. Now, what is AMH? So AMH is a protein produced by the granulosa cells. And this is in the primary preantral and small follicle. So these are the follicles that are really, really tiny. They only measure between two to four millimeters in diameter. So really tiny, not the ones that are nearing ovulation or that if you're a fertility patient and you're going in for cycle monitoring, you see these on ultrasound as you near ovulation. We're not talking about those ones. We're talking about the really, really, really tiny ones. Um, it usually takes approximately 100 days from those pre or primary preantral follicles to make it to that um, ovulatory stage. So it's also important to note that AMH levels are not detected in atretic or degenerative follicles. The highest levels are usually obtained when a person reaches about 25 years of age and then at the age of 30 there's a steady decline in the AMH values. The AMH in the bloodstream can be an indicator of fertility in women with regards to the number of eggs they actually have in their ovarian reserve. It can also be a predictor of menopause and it can also help with the diagnosing of polycystic ovarian syndrome, so PCOS, and ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, so OHSS. Now, when would this test be ordered? When you go in and you see your reproductive endocrinologist, there's gonna be a panel of tests that you're gonna to have to do. Um, so when those results and your medical history have come back, the doctor may initially say, let's add an AMH in there right away, depending on what your intake information is, so age, is usually a good indication that an AMH should be done. Um, but people that are trying to get pregnant, if you're considering IVF or an egg freezing cycle, now understanding your results. The first thing is that if you have access, so, so if you've done your blood test at an outside lab, say Life Labs in Ontario, we can actually log on and get those results ourselves. Um, I would recommend that you wait have your follow-up with your physician so that you can discuss the results and get the information you need collectively from everything pertaining to your medical history that you've shared with your doctor and all the other results. Based on those, then your doctor or your reproductive endocrinologist along with you can determine the best plan of care. Now, what do these results actually mean though? A high level of AMH can indicate remaining ovarian follicles or eggs, a higher likelihood of a positive response to an IVF cycle or treatment, can also indicate polycystic ovarian syndrome. A decline or low levels of AMH can indicate a progression to menopause, so early menopause, which we can see sometimes in uh, our fertility patients. It can also be an indication of a low level of response to IVF treatment or an IVF cycle. Um, and then it can also indicate the risk for ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So um, normally people with elevated AMH levels are at risk for OHSS and um, their doses would be teetered based on their response. Whereas if somebody has a low AMH level, the doctor may um, start off with higher doses and then teeter based on their response to avoid OHSS, or they may look at it and determine that with the low AMH, you may only produce one to two follicles anyway. So they may decide to um, go with a lower dose as your body would naturally produce one maybe two follicles every month anyway. So the information does help with the doctors to determine your plan of care. 
Now, if you're gonna be doing an AMH blood test, most clinics will offer this on-site um, where there will be a fee, usually it's about $100. If you're living in Ontario and you have access or if you live in the area of a Life Labs, then um, the cost there is approximately $70 to have the test done. Now, one of the things to note that is actually very, very important is that AMH does not um, indicate the quality of the eggs, okay? So um, it indicates in terms of numbers, whether you have a high um, ovarian reserve or a lower ovarian reserve, but it does not indicate that um, the, it does not indicate the quality of the eggs. So you could have a high AMH and have uh, poor quality eggs, or you can have a low AMH and have good quality eggs. Uh, there's no way to know until you actually get in and do the IVF cycle, unfortunately, at this point. Um, so those are all many things to consider because some people will still say that even if you have a low AMH, the you could still get pregnant. Um, so don't be discouraged based on that. You want to be looking at all the factors involved, everything that you've discussed with your reproductive endocrinologist um, to determine what is the best plan of action. So whether it's timed intercourse, moving into IUIs, or just jumping right into IVF or egg freezing. Um, so those are your best bets to um, look at when you're um, considering conceiving or egg freezing. I hope you found this information helpful. You can email me with any questions at yourivfnurse at gmail.com if you've got questions specifically about the services that I offer, so injection services, home visits, uh, support services, uh, you can email me directly at melanie at yourivfnurse.com. You can check out my website, www.yourivfnurse.com. You can follow me on Instagram at yourivfnurse. And you can also comment down below or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.